What does a Audi TT RS and a Ford Galaxy have in common? The same as a Skoda Yeti and the A45 AMG. The design of their four-link rear suspension. But why do all these different cars with transversal engine have the same rear suspension? Why can we find this specific design almost everywhere? And why did almost everyone copy it? Let's find out and see where this is coming from. First of all, we have to go back to Ford in the 1980s. Ford produced the Sierra with longitudinal engines and rear-wheel drive. Their rear axle were angled trailing arms. But for the next generation they wanted something new. Their intention was to create a medium-sized car which works on all world markets. So they chose the name Ford Mondeo, from the Latin word mundus, which means world. And they wanted a car which can do everything better. So they started with a blank sheet of paper. Priorities were interior space, good design and good handling. To get as much interior space as possible, they used a so-called cap forward design, which means that the windscreen is a lot further forward, the bonnet is a lot shorter. To be able to do that, they put the engine and gearbox transversely in front of the McPherson front axle, which also allowed them to have a much longer wheelbase while keeping the same overall length. And especially for the estate version, it was clear that the space between both wheel arches should be a lot bigger. At the same time, they wanted an independent rear suspension, which could be adjusted in camber and toe, but should still use as little space as possible and should be as cheap as possible. They came up with a simple but genius design. Ford used two long trailing arms, which take most of the suspension loads. They used a small lower wishbone and an adjustable upper wishbone, where you can adjust camber. To have as much space in the trunk as possible, they separated spring and damper. The slim damper is positioned vertically, which is ideal, so it can work properly. And they now created one characteristic feature of this axle. Because the axle should also be able to be driven for all-wheel drive, they needed to position the spring out of the way. And they used the fourth and most rearward suspension arm, with which you can adjust the toe angle to hold the spring at the same time. Disadvantage is that the spring is now not acting directly on the wheel carrier, but with a certain ratio on the wishbone. But advantage is that they have now a super compact independent rear axle, which can also be driven. All suspension arms are welded sheet metal, so they are super simple and cheap, and they still got a rear axle with great lateral support and accurate kinematics. Result of this was that the space between the rear wheel arches was now 30 mm wider compared to the previous Ford Sierra. And they could offer this car with all wheel drive, although Ford and also Audi used McPherson rear axles before, which took a lot more space and couldn't guide the wheel as accurately as the new axle. The new Mondeo was popular and sold well around the world. Because of the high production numbers, the rear axle design already paid off, and it was pretty cheap for Ford to put it in their next mass production car, the Ford Focus. And the rear axle was the unique selling point of the Focus. VW Golf and Opel Astra still had a twist beam rear axle. That is just one large metal piece holding both rear wheels. Because it can twist, it acts like an independent suspension to a certain degree, but if one rear wheel is unsettled because of a pothole, the other one is affected as well. And the twist beam is fixed to the chassis directly, while the four-link suspension has a damped subframe, which means it's quieter and a lot more comfortable. Also, the kinematics are a lot more accurate on the four-link suspension, and twist beam designs have the problem of weak lateral stability, which gives you an unprecise feeling. The Ford Focus with its four-link rear suspension was very popular for its great driving characteristics. In the meantime, the VW Group also designed a driven rear axle for their all-wheel drive cars with transversal engines, but their axle didn't turn out so great. It was big, heavy, expensive, and the dampers were hanging in a strange 45-degree angle. So while Ford kept on using their genius falling suspension in more and more cars, VW took notes and copied the design almost 100% for their new platform for transversal engines. Because it was for the new PQ35 platform, very quickly a lot of VW Group cars used this rear axle design for all engines. So every car from the Golf category upwards with transversal engine used the falling suspension. 
With the Golf 6, VW started to save money and used the old twist beam axle for their smaller engines again. The same was true for Audis and later we have one special case here, the Audi S1. The Audi A1 is the prettier brother of the Polo, which was never designed to have all-wheel drive. When Audi decided to create an S version, it was clear that they should have all-wheel drive. And which axle did they choose? Exactly, the proven Ford 4-link suspension. In the meantime, Ford created the second generation of the Focus in a cooperation with Volvo and Mazda. And of course, these brands used the design for their portfolio too. So we have Mazda 3, 6, CX-5 with the 4-link rear suspension. Also, the Volvo S40, V50, V60 and others are using it. Opel still used the cheaper twist beam axle for their Astra, but added a watt linkage to improve lateral support and precision. For the Vectra and later Insignia, however, they copied the Ford design as well. Also Toyota used it for their Avensis and although they used simple twist beam rear axles for their smaller cars for a long time, they introduced the famous falling suspension much later in 2018 for their new world platform. And when Mercedes completely redesigned their A-Class and started from scratch, guess which rear axle they chose? All these brands use the same layout with little modifications. You always have two trailing arms and three lateral wishbones. The most rearward ones carry the spring and are adjustable. If car brands introduce this falling suspension, they promote it with better handling, precision and all-wheel drive. If they go back to a twist beam, they call it weight reduction, while it's mostly cost saving. Some brands like Mercedes use aluminium for the rearward spring arm. So every brand did their own little adjustments, but the overall concept of the design is the same for everyone and has its origin in the Ford Mondeo from 1993. And while all this happened, Ford redesigned their Mondeo rear suspension to a new multi-link design to get better comfort. And now they stopped the production of Mondeo and Focus. So this story shows you how a good idea can be copied across the car world and can be used for decades. I hope you liked this little story of geeky car details and check out my other videos for more and my online courses with the links below with car knowledge you can only get here. See you at the next video.